uh, maybe Harold, when you talk a bit about uh, backup power, I know it's something that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the very first projects I ever worked on as a baby lawyer in 2005 when I started a law firm was the Hurricane Katrina panel. I sort of volunteered to help out there on the law firm side. Backup power option was a big deal coming out of that uh, panel, that recommendation. Understand the public interest goals. What, what, and maybe some of the legal challenges as well, but what are, what are some of the practical challenges that you sort of say, yeah, the other side, you know, there are some practical challenges to it, but they're, they're overcomable for, for these reasons. Can you sort of walk through some of that? Well, uh, yes, and, and I do think these challenges are overcomable, but if we're going to have uh, real uh, network resiliency, we have to recognize them. The first I want to mention is the diesel fuel access and also diesel fuel storage, uh, particularly in environmentally sensitive areas or uh, potentially in isolated and hard to recover areas. That's, uh, there are a lot of places where we don't want to put uh, three days worth of diesel fuel for a generator because we're worried about if it gets into the groundwater. Uh, there are, uh, however, uh, a lot of issues in prioritization, um, by which I mean uh, um, when we have a limited resource like fuel in a disaster area, how do we prioritize um, maintaining power to the communication grid and the elements of the communication grid. I think uh, that uh, um, that uh, is something that the GAO has recently said FEMA has not uh, paid sufficient attention to. And um, I've heard stories in the past of uh, essentially people hijacking fuel um, that was bound uh, for communications uh, uh, tower generators being taken to other purposes. Finally, I do want to stress power in the home. Um, and uh, the FCC has not looked at this since its 2015 order. Uh, at that time, there was an expectation that commercial carriers that were offering um, non-powered systems, which are all uh, voice over IP systems, uh, were moving to systems that could use commercial batteries rather than the large um, and expensive uh, batteries that generally only provide two hours uh, worth of time. Um, there was a consensus that there was supposed to be a phase-in from uh, the current uh, rule, which um, only requires carriers to offer at the point of sale um, a backup power system that would be good for eight hours, to something where at least an eight hour, ideally a 24 hour uh, backup power uh, system would become uh, mandatory. The need for this has increased. We've heard uh, from some of the panelists about week long blackouts that make. Uh, essential communications uh, impossible, uh, and this is a, uh, a very real problem. It's, it's going to be tough to solve, but it's one that we absolutely have to solve for the modern communications grid. And sorry, final, final, final follow for me on that point. Um, what, what do you, when we first started discussing this, you know, particularly back in 2005, it was very much a macro network still, right? Now we've got small cell built in, layering different approaches. Your, your view, I assume, is, you know, we need to take that into account in the sense that, you know, macro sites could have more robust backup power, you know, small small cells or whatnot, just from physical capacity or, or, or just the need for them to stay up relative to the macro. Is this different as your view that we should take a, a sort of a gradient sort of type approach? Well, I think there's a lot of room here for new thinking. Um, for example, ATSC 3.0 uh, is coming in. We've heard broadcasters maintain um, a, uh, their own generation um, and have uh, significant power. It may be uh, that we should look at how ATSC 3.0 uh, uh, spectrum can be used to help supplement uh, when power is down on cell towers or on micro cells. We should. Uh, one of the beauties of our modern network is that we've got a lot of redundancy here. Um, we've got a lot of different options. And instead of, and, and everyone for themselves uh, kind of mentality, or an everybody is responsible for themselves mentality, um, we should be thinking of this as one big communications grid in the geographic area uh, where we can shift uh, communications depending on where uh, power is available. Yeah, a lot of that makes sense to me. I've been sort of the, the big.